Oaks Governor, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor and Acting Governor Dan Patrick is ready, I believe, to sit down and give us a briefing as to the state's response to Hurricane Barrel. Let's check in. The reason for this is we want the media to get the facts straight. There has been, I'll give the media the benefit of the doubt, some misunderstanding, misreporting, and I would say, in many cases, not asking for the facts, not asking for the other side of the story. And I think you will be surprised today what you hear. We're going to update you on progress being made in Houston. We're going to talk about center point. But first, first, I want to honor another law enforcement officer who was potentially ambushed last night in Harris County, as you all have reported on. Whoever these animals were will be caught, prosecuted, and hopefully a judge will give them, or a jury, the punishment they deserve. In the midst of this storm recovery, when so many people are suffering, when our police are working 12 and 16 hour shifts, to think that a bunch of animals go in and pistol whip someone behind the counter of a pizza shop because they didn't get their order right, and they go out and apparently set an ambush, at a minimum gun down one of our brave heroes in his patrol vehicle, will not stand will not. And the criminals in this city, in this county, and they are there, better be on notice. The police will hunt you down. Just two days ago, we had a press conference with Mayor Whitmire and Chief Satterwhite said they needed more people. Instantly, within hours, Nim Kidd, our chief of TDEM, Texas Division of Emergency Management, reached out to other police departments, and we have reinforced horsemen coming, some already here. We already sent 40 troopers. We'll send more if needed. We will send as many police as is needed to this community to protect the community, to protect the property and protect each other, their fellow officers. It's just unacceptable, unacceptable. We pray for the family. It's my understanding the officer had been on the force for five years, just doing his job, just doing his job. So let's talk about the storm. First, I want to give an update of what Nim and I have been doing the last couple of days quickly. We've traveled the state uh, on Tuesday, the day after the storm. We left the emergency center, center in Austin, and we went to Bryan College Station. They had some damage, but it's also our, our staging center for the state, which is important here that we will get back to that in a moment. That staging center can sleep 200 individuals that we would send out to help citizens. Uh, we can keep boats there, trucks there. We even had a crew from Missouri and Tennessee that we brought in in advance. We were prepared in advance. That's our staging center. We went there and we got a briefing with local officials. Then we went to League City for Galveston County and had a briefing there with local officials. And then we came to Houston and had a briefing with the mayor and local officials. Yesterday, we traveled by helicopter to Matagorda County where the storm made landfall, met with local officials and had a briefing. And when we say we had a briefing, we go around the table with the uh, emergency management people, the sheriffs, the constables, uh, the county commissioners, the judges, the mayors, whoever has a need um, or a question, we answer, we ask, and we fulfill. And then we took the helicopter to Jasper where they had multiple tornadoes and they're 
belief is somewhere between 40 and 60 homes were greatly damaged or destroyed and tremendous damage, trees down everywhere. Um, that's what we did yesterday. Now, why do we do that? We do that because under the law, the federal government law, that's our job no matter what Joe Biden or Lena Hidalgo have to say about it. And we will follow the law, the federal law, in our request to the federal government. Let's be clear, and we'll get to that. And what we do is we say, is there anything you need? And everywhere I went, and this man's been doing this job now for 15 years, 16 years, the best in the country. So we've been around talking to lots of counties, and we were in Jasper, but we had other counties there. There's not a county judge or a mayor who has not gotten what he or she asked for, and the request that they've made since we've been there, they will get. There's not a county judge or a city mayor or a commissioner who has said to us, the state of Texas did not get them what they wanted when they needed it. And might I add, just for the record, on Saturday, we reached out to Lena Hidalgo and asked her if she needed anything, and she texted back, no. Sunday, we asked her, did she need anything? She didn't answer. Monday, we asked her, did she need anything? And she said, we're good. Tuesday, we asked her if she needed anything. We're good. We have not had one request from the county judge of Harris County. So I guess all of her citizens are fine in the unincorporated areas. Yes, she didn't need anything. But if she did, we're there to fulfill it. So, Nim, let me turn it over to you to give, you, to give us an update of what we're doing in Houston at this state. Thank you, Governor. Uh, start off with a little bit of good news is after the rains, the rivers and streams are improving, drainage is improving, but it is still a dangerous situation. If there is water still over the road, please turn around, do not drown. And water that we received in the northern part of our state will continue to come down as it tries to work its way to the Gulf. So even though you may have somewhat blue skies and no chance of rain, if there are barricades over a road, please do not remove them and please do not drive around them. Roads will still be dangerous as we work through these next several days for the waters uh, to recede and rivers and creeks to get back in their bank. I'm gonna talk specifically about the Houston Galveston Area Council of Government, HGAC. 12 of the counties in HGAC have declared countywide disasters in 30 of the cities. We are currently on 160 boil water notices across eight of those counties. And that's very important that citizens understand. We are continuing to source and deliver water to points of distribution as requested by your local officials. We are doing uh, a very good job of moving those logistics and working with all partners, our private sector partners, our volunteer organizations, and the federal government, at the, the good people at FEMA, to help us work through this process. You have 135 wastewater treatment plants that are offline right now, and the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality and our public works response teams are working to get those back up as quickly as we can. Power is still, electricity is still the number one issue that we are dealing with right now. In fact, electricity is what's causing the boil water notices and the wastewater treatment plants to go offline, in addition to the other damages. Hospitals are severely impacted by this right now. Twelve hospitals in this county are still on internal disaster. We continue to have our field hospitals set up at NRG Stadium. We continue to bring EMS units and resources in to support local 911 needs, as well as put staff at those hospitals so that when an ambulance goes to the hospital with an acute patient, that they can get that patient seen and turned over to the doctors and nurses in the ER, and that ambulance can get back out on the street for the next 911 call. We have 43 dialysis clinics that are still having issues right now. We are working with them to either move their patients to a different location or make sure that dialysis is available. It is very critical to those patients that need it. Um, our ISTAT, and we've asked you to help get the information out about ISTAT. As Governor Patrick mentioned, we will follow the federal law. 44 CFR section 206, which will be provided in your packet, is very clear of what all states are supposed to do in order to request federal assistance. We're following those regulations to the letter. We now have about 1,400 homes that have had their assessments done and we believe qualify for individual assistance. 
Uh, stars continue to come in. Those are the state of Texas assistance requests. We continue to get stars. In fact, at 9 o'clock last night, we got the first star from the city of Houston for generators. We're going to work with the city to make sure we source the generator to the buildings that they need to go to and get those generators on those facilities as fast as possible. That's it for the report, Governor. So I want to go through a little bit to make sure the record is clear on what has happened, and then I want to talk about power after that, and then we'll take whatever questions. I apologize if I raised my voice too much in the beginning, but I am just heartbroken for this officer who was killed. And it's hard to move on from that. Since I've been Lieutenant Governor and Greg Abbott's been Governor, we've lost over 50 officers in the line of duty. I've been to many of those funerals, including in this area. And every time we lose one, there's a piece of all of us who dies with them because they're just people like you out there protecting us. So pray for their families. I want to walk through what has been totally misreported about the interaction between the state and the federal government, specifically with the President of the United States. Not because we need to address this now, but because not intentionally do I believe, but the media is putting out some misinformation which I think undermines the progress we need to make, undermines their faith that Texas is delivering on everything they need. Because I've read it in the newspaper, because I've seen it on television. I saw a false report last night. It wasn't intentional. Someone saying that I needed to fill out a form so people get, could get personal assistance. That's just only a little part of the story. You have to follow the law and do the assessments first. It's not waiting on the state of Texas, NIM or myself. We have to do and follow the law. And we now have assess assessments because we had teams in the field doing what? In 15 counties going out and getting the information required by the federal government to get individuals assistance. And we have teams out today where we can add to that. And we will give you those 15 counties uh, where people will be able to get federal assistance because I will make that declaration today but by law I could not do it until we followed the federal guidelines. Were there those 15 counties? So the counties that you will be requesting from the president and the president will have to grant this is Brazoria, Chambers, Galveston, Harris, Jackson, Jasper, Jefferson, Liberty, Matagorda, Montgomery, Orange, Polk, San Jacinto, Walker, and Wharton. And we can give those to you at the end again if, if you would like. Again, the law says we have to go out and do the assessments because FEMA just doesn't hand out money unless there's some proof of need. So we do what we're supposed to do. But total misreporting because I just don't think you all knew the facts. And that's okay, we understand. Just ask us, we'll tell you before you go to print because we don't want to undermine people to think, well, we're not getting what we should get. You know, we didn't do this, we didn't do that. We're doing everything we should have done. And now I want to walk you through, and this will be a short walk. The first page where there's a yellow sticker here. They're not numbered. It's about the fourth pit page in. It's a brief timeline of the interaction with President Biden because there's one of two things that are a fact. He's either totally incompetent and has no idea what he's doing. I want to repeat, the president is either totally incompetent and has no idea what he is doing and does not remember what he said, or he's just lied to me and to Texas. As you will see as we go through these documents, it's documented. But just so you have the timeline, At 3.30, President tweets, I've spoken to Mayor Whitmire, Judge Hidalgo, and spoken earlier with Lieutenant Governor and FEMA regarding devastating impacts on the Hurricane Burrell of Texas. While speaking with the Lieutenant Governor, I immediately approved a major disaster 
declaration. So let's go back to him finding me and finding the governor. And the governor's responded the same. Excuse my allergies. The governor responded the same. The president has his cell number. He has called the president before. What's he mean he can't find the governor? What's he mean he can't find me? I was with his FEMA officials Friday, Sunday, Monday, for 12 or 15 hours a day, sitting right behind me or next to me or in meetings with them. All he had to do was ask the FEMA advisors who work with us, and they're good people. We don't have any problem with the rank and file of FEMA. We don't have any problem. We have a great relationship with him. He didn't. It was a lie. He made it up. I, was, I couldn't find them. He didn't try. And I don't think any of you have asked for their phone call logs, but you've asked for his phone call logs. Ask for their phone. What did he do? He talked to Mayor Whitmire, I believe the night before. He could have asked Mayor Whitmire for my number. He could have said, do you know the lieutenant governor? He wasn't trying to find us. He was trying to create a story. I couldn't find them. Couldn't find them. So that they need, you know, they, they're, they're delaying everything. We weren't delaying anything. So what happens, go back one page, go to 1149, um, see where it says 1149, 20 second phone call from FEMA External Affairs. So eight minutes go by from FEMA who called, or Seth, called this gentleman right here. The president wanted to reach me, wanted my phone number. He could have asked FEMA on Saturday or Sunday, but he waited till Monday. Seth gives him the phone number, my cell number, time passes, he never calls. And who does he call? He calls him. He doesn't even know who to call after we give him the numbers. He's looking for me, we give him the number, he calls him. But we were in the room, we were, we were assuming he might make a mistake. While on the phone, President uh, Biden uh, asked the acting governor to announce their conversation and the president's approval of my request in the upcoming press conference. If we go back and look at my tweet, you will see that I put out a very professional, non-political uh, tweet that I talked with the president. I appreciated him uh, issuing the the, de the disaster declaration that I wanted. Um, and he asked me to go out and talk about it. I did. I thanked him. I told the local officials. He asked me, he said, are you going to go and announce this? I want you to announce this. Said, yes, sir. We'll do that. By the way, I asked him for an emergency disaster declaration. Key point. And I asked it and filled out the form for it to be continuing. You're going to learn that what he gave us, he took away immediately. He gave it, shouted about it, blamed Abbott and I for not doing something right. He gave us the money and he took it away immediately and the documents show it. Total lie or doesn't know what the hell he's doing. So the next thing that happens, um, we begin at 12.07, right out five minutes after the phone call to start the paperwork. Now we go to the next page where the president says he's talked with everyone and he immediately approved a, read this line at, three th at 350, I immediately approved a major disaster declaration. We have a tweet on that. You can all find it. We'll send it to you if you're looking for it. He goes, makes a big deal that he, um, We'll get it to you, or maybe in the packet. He tweeted, he made a major declaration. No, he didn't. I asked him for an emergency disaster declaration. He then tweets out, he gave us a major declaration. He made a mistake. So he lied about trying to reach us. He's confused about what he did. I asked him to give us a continuing agreement. 
And then he announces he's made a major declaration. Now, what does that mean? It means benefits that are really good for taxes. Obviously, his staff figures out he made a mistake. And so at 4 o'clock, we get a call from them. We need you to change your disaster declaration. So when Lena Hidalgo says, well, the lieutenant governor in the state of Texas needed help. No, we didn't help. He, he granted on the phone a major disaster. He announced he gave us a major declaration. Words mean something under the law of what benefits we get. So his staff said, Mr. President, you made a mistake, I assume. We've got to ask the governor to change the declaration, which we did, which we did. So that was the second declaration. I want you to go back now to, go back to, there's three yellow tags in the back. The first one will say, uh, the first one will say, we asked for a emergency disaster on the phone, which I did, which he granted, which he bragged about, which he bragged about. And we checked the box for it to be a continuing declaration. In other words, don't end, because we don't know how much damage we're going to have. And then you have the page that says a major. That's the second declaration we made, because he didn't know what he told me on the phone, and he announced something differently to the world. And that one says major disaster continuing below that. Continuing. Guess what he did? Guess what Uncle Joe did? Where's our page with the... On July 9th, the day I talked to him, the day he agreed to an emergency disaster declaration, the day he then asked for a major declaration because he messed up, he didn't know what he was talking about or what he had told me, It says, date requested by governor, July 9th. Incident period in yellow, July 9th, the 5th to the 9th. So the day he gave it to us, he ended it. He ended our reimbursements for any new claims we would make. Can you believe this guy? Can you believe this guy? Now, we can ask for an extension, and we will, and he'll need to grant it. He's going to have to give us another declaration, or, or an extension through FEMA. Extension. An extension. So I just want you to be clear. Three things happen. I ask him for an emergency disaster. He grants it. I said I need it continuing, and I need it for 121 counties. And guess what else he did? on this day. He cut our list from 121 counties to 67? 67. So he took, a, took out almost all the counties. So what did he do? It was just he's politicized the operation of FEMA with the state of Texas, either because he's trying to save his hide and stay on the ballot because Democrats are trying to take him off, or he doesn't know what he was doing and doesn't remember what he said or what he did. We have never, ever had any president, Clinton, Bush, Obama, Trump, politicize the work with FEMA and the states. It's a sacred, it's a sacred agreement we have. City and counties need help. The state helps them. The federal government helps us. On the same day he granted it, he ended it. Nim? Thank you, Governor. I, um, I'd like the opportunity to help explain to some of the media and, and any of the folks that are watching or listening to this about how the declaration process works. In your packet, you have 44 CFR, that's Code of Federal Regulations, Section 206, that FEMA wrote to discuss how states are supposed to follow the law. 
there's one person on the planet that can override that law and grant a declaration outside of the law, and that's the President of the United States. There has been some reporting that this was a slow ask, and I will tell you, that's a lie. This was not a slow ask. This was a timely ask following the law. And in fact, I would argue that Governor Patrick's ask of Biden to get this declaration may have sped it up had he not ended it on the exact same day. But the document that I have that we will share with you goes back to 2007 from a time frame perspective. This will be the 27th major disaster declaration since 2007. The average time, and on this spreadsheet, this is why it's so important for you to look at this, the average time on this spreadsheet that it takes for FEMA to give an answer back to the governor on if we have qualified for a major disaster is 16 days. Why would it take the federal government 16 days to, do, to answer a governor's request? Because unless a president is going to intervene, the law says the feds have to follow the same laws that we have to follow in submitting that request. And so I urge you to look at this and please help us correct this narrative and get this story right. There are Texans right now that still don't have power. And it, and it, it embarrasses me and it saddens me to the point that this president has weaponized the federal government to enrage our citizens here to thinking that I am not doing my job and that our governor is not doing his job. And that's a lie. They are absolutely doing the job. They are taking every bit of the professional advice that I give them. And there is no way that our recovery process could move any faster. In fact, I would argue the games and the drama that the federal government is adding to this would even be slowing down that process and it needs to stop now. Yeah. So the average time it took for the federal government to grant the declaration going back to 2007 was 16 days. And I got it done in 10 minutes. One day, which was Tuesday. And again, I did not believe that there was any ill intent or malice on behalf of the president. When I talked to him, it was a cordial conversation. But when you see, as soon as we announce it and thank him, he then attacks Greg Abbott, he attacks me, he attacks our response that we delay and you know it's going to hurt the citizens, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It made me wonder, and then when I get this document that he cut it almost in half, 60, you know, we had 121 counties, he cuts it down to 67, and then he ended it the same day he gave it to me. It's disgraceful, absolutely disgraceful. So that's the facts. If you have questions as in your reporting, um, ask us. Don't believe what Lena Hidalgo might say. Um, she put out, there, we put this in our packet too. You know, she put out a tweet after the president gave us the money. And she says down here, um, for families and businesses, this means access to federal aid. Lena, you don't know what you're talking about either. No, what the president granted is not for individuals. So she's putting out a statement that says, once he gave that disaster, families and businesses are gonna get money. That's not true. That's another declaration, which is the 1A, individual assistance, which I will submit today. And the reason I'm submitting it today, because under the law, we had to do assessments, which we did in 15 counties, and the, and the other counties are being done today. And by the way, if you're an individual in one of those counties, that he didn't approve, you're not going to get any individual assistant because he cut you out. He cut it from 121 counties to 67. So my job as governor or lieutenant governor, and the governor will be back, is to get the people of Texas everything they deserve, to get our local governments everything they deserve, to repay them for all their expenses. And as Nim said, we want the president of the United States to quit weaponizing this agency and trying to create, really create problems uh, with the people of Texas uh, by them thinking somehow they're not getting what they deserve. 
Lastly, on that issue, and then we'll talk about power, uh, there was the question, well, why wouldn't we ask for his assistance before? Had he called me Sunday, I would have said, Mr. President, thank you. I don't need the declaration today. We'll need it in a few days, and I will call you. And here's the reason. And you'll look at this, this sheet here. It goes back to 2007. There was a time when, when, when we would use emergency declarations, and there's sometimes we do it now. But back in 2007, 2008, 2010, we didn't have this great agency we have now in Texas. We poured hundreds of millions of dollars into building the best emergency response team and er emergency management team in the country. You know, Joe Biden said, oh, I have all these generators. We didn't need any of his generators. We filled every request we have. Is there any request you had that you did not fulfill on generators? The ones we got last night we are sourcing right now. The yeah. others have been filled. Yeah. So the, we got the list from Houston last night for the first time. Every other one, everything was filled. We didn't need them. Now, we want their assistance, and we want them to reimburse our cities and counties and our citizens, and we can use their meals, and we can use their rice and water now or later. But we didn't need them Sunday. We didn't need them Monday. In fact, they would have slowed us down because on the generators, when we get a generator from the federal government that Joe Biden wanted to give us, it would have taken days to get it up and running. We get our generators out like that. That's true. The way the push package comes from the feds is those generators set on skids, and those skids have to be loaded onto a truck and trailer from the location that they're looked at. We have to assess them first because we haven't seen them before. We have to make sure that they run and they have all of their parts. Then we load them on a trailer, we take them to the location, unload them from the trailer, and then work with an electrician to, to get them set up. The way that we send generators out of our contract is one call to a contractor that has a generator on wheels, takes it to the location and sets it up. It, it goes a lot faster. The Corps of Engineers supports FEMA in the generator push package. The Corps staff has told us it is at least 48 hours from the time that a generator is identified to fit a location before they can have electricity on. I think many of you can report out that we had generators as soon as they pulled up working with the building owners that had already installed manual transfer switches. Power was coming back onto those within hours, not 48 hours, not two days. So ours were faster. We didn't need his. Um, we have everything. Um, and then as the days go by, yes, you need reinforcements from some of their supplies. But we didn't need it those days. So this has been a political stunt, unfortunately, uh, from him from day one. And uh, we're going to get everything we should get for our citizens. Look, I don't know if he's going to be president next week. Uh, seems to be a lot of people in his own party trying to get rid of him. But whoever we work with, whether it's himself or Kamala Harris or whomever it is, we will work with them. We have a great relationship with FEMA, a great relationship. And all of their people, we were with Tony Robbins, the, the, our district coordinator, yesterday. He's fabulous. They're all fabulous. This was all either campaign driven um, or just a president who didn't know what he was talking about uh, and looking to score some political points maybe to divert other things. And I'm not going to let Texans bear the brunt of that. Um, power. The, the uh, governor announced today that he's doing it, asking for an investigation of um, Centerpoint and any power company that uh, does not deliver and see what the problems were. By the way, when we went to Matagorda, Yesterday, they said they'll have about 80 or 90 percent of their power back, except for the city of Sargent. So they'll have their power back. We were in Jasper yesterday. All the counties, with the exception of some spot areas, felt like they're going to have 80 or 90 percent of their power back. Uh, if, if Centerpoint meets their goals by Sunday, they will have reduced it from about 2.2 million people without power down to still about 500,000 for next week. Folks, that is not acceptable. And I know it's a hard job. I know it's, it's more people than they've ever had without power, and I know that no other power company in the uh, uh, country has ever put a million people back online in two days. Um, I saw a report last night on one of the TV stations that said this is the third day without power. Well, they obviously couldn't restore it on the day of the storm, so it was the second day. So they did get a million back. But and, and people are reasonable, and people are patient, and people are understanding. You know, people have gotten out and they've seen this damage. I, Travis, Herz, uh, Travis Herzog on Channel 13 last night gave a great description. I thought in the weather, you know, this was a Cat 1 story, a Cat 1 storm, but why was there so much damage? I mean, when you go out and about and see it, it's because the eye wall came over a large part of the city with the most 
sustained winds and gusts, and it maintained itself for three or four hours. So I think as people have gotten out uh, of their neighborhoods, if they can, if they, got, if they can get gas in their car to go somewhere, um, if they can, they've seen this damage. It's really unbelievable. Um, the other day in the press conference, Tom Ramsey, our commissioner from Harris County, said that, that this debris collection will be probably be double what we had during the Dura show that we had several weeks ago. Tremendous debris. Um, so I understand they have a tough job. Um, we're going to investigate it. We're going to get to the bottom of it. Uh, we are always going to have big storms in this area. We have lots of trees that hit power lines. That's going to happen. But we have to be sure that they were prepared as they should have been before. My only comment on that, and I've had lots of meetings, lots of discussions, I sense that maybe they didn't see the impact uh, that we had. Um, they underestimated the impact of the storm and the direction of the storm. Um, they brought in 12,000 people. And you understand they can't bring in 11,000 people four days out and put them in a hotel and feed them, and they don't even know where the storm's going. You can't chase that army. But it would appear they, they were not as prepared as they should have been and not ready to go as quickly as they could have been. And had they, and again, we'll see what the, you know, we'll see what the facts are later, um, but had they, then maybe some people would have their power sooner. Um, they say that they'll have cut that number from 2.2 million, 2.3 million without power down to about 500,000 by Sunday. So many people will be back, but let me tell you what, it's a, it's a terrible situation for people who are in this heat, stores around them aren't open, where do you get food, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, it's not a state function to operate that, but it is our state public utility commission to oversee it. And as we speak right now, there's a committee hearing at the Public Utility Commission in which the CEO of Center Point is testifying. If he hasn't already, he will be shortly. So that process already started. Right now, we'll, we'll get back and dissect what happened or didn't happen. Um, but right now, I want every person at Center Point to have one job. Get the power back on. We'll talk about what happened before the storm later. Just get the power back on. Let's open up for questions. Yes, ma'am. Our agency owns about 75 generators. Those have been deployed in mostly into the Houston, Galveston area. I can get a list of the breakdown of the cities. Those are smaller generators that are helped supporting traffic intersection signals. Those are the ones we own. The rest we contract out for. And there's been about 135 generators that have been requested and are delivered or en route to be set up. And in case of some of them are set up waiting on facility electricians to be able to hook them up to the building. Now, another good story of that, and we want to continue this, for generators that we have already put in the field, when power has been brought back onto that facility, we're getting those same generators and moving them to another facility to be ready for the next deployment. Can you walk me into a little bit more detail about where they are deployed? Uh, they're all over the place. We'll get a map for you that have those locations. Well, critical infrastructure facilities, some are at hospitals, uh, some are at traffic intersections, some are at water and wastewater treatment plants. So they're public infrastructure type facilities. They are not at homes and they are not on private sector businesses. Okay. 